Hello there, everyone. Well, Elena, today's selection is Nesun Dorma, and we are going to explore the differences between singing and speaking and many other details. So let's start by speaking through the text. Hello, singers. I'm starting. Nesun Dorma. Nessun dorma. Tu pure, o oh principessa, nella tua fredda stanza guardi le stelle che tremano d'amore e di speranza. Ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me. Il nome mio nessun saprà. No, no. Sulla tua bocca lo dirò quando la luce splenderà ed il mio bacio scioglierà il silenzio che ti fa mia. Il nome suo nessun saprà e noi dovremmo, ahimè, morir, morir. Di legua o notte, tramontate stelle, tramontate stelle, all'alba vincerò. Vincerò, vincerò. All right. So we have a lot to um, a lot to unpack in this aria. There are a lot of uh, great little unwritten phenomenon. But the very first thing, Puccini puts the accent of the first word in a different way than it is spoken. So if you speak it, it's like this. Right? Nessun dorma. But he's written. Nessun dorma, right? So, how do we negotiate that? So here is just a matter of the melody and of its rhythm. We can decide if we want to have some help from this diction exercise to divide into syllables. Nessun dorma. But here we have to know that the long note is on the E. Nessun dorma. So that's what we have to do. Ne, it's long. And the double S becomes very fast. Nessun dorma. That makes sense. So, so we're, you know, the, one of the big things is that um, the time people have to understand is that the time of, of speaking and the time of singing are much different, right? But one of the things I'd like to address is that there is a big tradition of composers doing this, putting, so for instance, Puccini in Tosca, right? Uh, she, e, um, al, so it's alla tua villa andiamo, right? There's a line, but he yes. sets it alla tua villa andiamo, okay. soletta. So it's, a lot of times it's when there, there's a certain expression being done, there's a certain coyness. Here's another example. Um, in the duet between Violetta and Alfredo, he says, Quando non sa mi ancora. Right? Okay. Quando I understand that word. point. Is but that in this case, if you tell me that they say quando instead of quando, which means uh, like make it um, to put a stress on the last vowel, then it is very audible even for us we we hear it as a native speakers mm, but in this case he didn't really change the accent of the spoken language in my opinion because it's just that the e is a little longer but he's not saying ne soon ne soon okay. uh, he's saying ne soon let me let me play let me play devil's advocate he could have said it Dorma, right? It's not as charming, right? Okay. And, right? But yeah, he could yeah. have completely yielded, right? Or the poet could have said, dorma, right? Uh, we have to know that it's just a matter of accent, of rhythm, and of melody. And they do. In this case, uh, I feel it as if the uh, the stress still were on the you. I it's like when you said. Okay. The so that's the most important thing, though. That's the most important thing because 
someone who doesn't speak Italian doing this, you can actually tell that they're not feeling that. That's just my point. Yeah. You understand, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? So you have to have the, you have this, you know, because you speak Italian, you have this grounded accent in the right place of the word. So when it's set off, there's a foil. It actually play, it actually, that's why it's so expressive when it's sung. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Sure, sure. So without that foundation, you have to have the foundation first. Then you take the music as it's written. Okay. So I think I, we should go, maybe we should go on. Um, yes, so, yes, you are. <laughs> You took a lot of, you know, I've written out the things with the doublings and as we've established in other conversations, they look too big, but you took a lot of the doublings that I've written and mainly you did it by just stopping. So you stopped phonation, right? So if you read the next line, the, the pretty Okay, I, shall I stop or not? No, do, do however it comes naturally, very innocent, the way you would just read it innocently. Do, pure. O principessa. Right. Or. So we have both the P's. Both of the P's are doubled very, very, very subtly. But what's nice for the pe people listening in is that they can compare how you just spoke it to how it is set in the music. And those doublings are there. But if you overdo them, they're not good. They're too, they become too strong, too vulgar. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, uh, it's like having a strong accent, a so, strong accent from somewhere. It's too strong. Tu pure, o principe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, becomes vulgar. It, it, it was a good thing when it started, and then it becomes exaggerated, and then it becomes vulgar. Exactly. Um, and that's the thing, is it, that's the danger when it's written like this. So that's what I want people to know, is that when I do write these things out, it's just a very subtle thing. But without it, what happens if you don't have it at all again it's like the you know you've overcooked the pasta and the noodles are all very very mushy the next the next line the the uh the fredda stanza one nella tua fredda stanza so one of the things that you need to, or someone needs to understand from this is that this is very rhythmic right if you say it again Nella tua fredda stanza. So you have the double L, you have the double D, you have the N going into the TZ of stanza. All of these things have to be hit. And also you have the word tua, right, that has to be put over one note, right? And as you say it, it's exactly the perfect, it's actually in the time that he wrote. He wrote it exactly the way you said it. This is one of those things where sometimes it's written not as conversational, but he wrote this exactly the way you just said it. And if you say it again. Nella tua fredda stanza. And here's another thing. You have two accented E's that are closed, that are the small version, right? Nella tua fredda. Right. Okay, so let's go on. The next line. Guardi le stelle. Right. So um, you doubled the S in speaking. Yes, and in, well. And in singing, that's a that would be a weak that that would be a weak monosyllable. So in singing, I would not encourage somebody to double that S. You'd have to elongate the the le. Yes, yeah, sure. Guardi le stelle. That right. would be very and again, fast. The the word for stars in Italian is an accented e that's closed, right? So accented syllables in Italian you must memorize them. There there are some formulas, but you have to know every single word. You have to know exactly whether it's open or closed, and then this does matter. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah. go on. The next line. Okay. In the next line, I have a hard time reading it right. Because in this very case, the word tremano for me is very hard. As I would never say that, but it's not right. I say it che tremano, but it's not right. It's my accent. Yes, yes, north. right. But, so but that's, that's what's say, natural. I that's would say natural just to be just to be natural. 
okay? Because we said before, just to be quick, but just to remember that, that there are a lot of native singers that keep their accent when they, when they especially uh, dealing with E's. Hmm? So open E, close E, if they say it certain way when they speak, then they say it even when they sing. Okay, so in this but, case- but First of all, let's make a clarification for our, our listeners, right? So um, I, I am an American in Southern California and Elena is in Milan. Right. Yeah. So Milano. So you're acknowledging that in Milano, there are certain things that you do naturally, but it is not necessarily the standard Italian. Right. Exactly. So you're you're saying that uh, up up north, you would say tremano with a. No, a, I'm a, saying that I say tremano because I'm, I wasn't born in Milano. So I also have a different accent from okay. people from Milan. Just to be honest, because Understood. I don't say so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you're not speaking for everybody from Milan, right? Exactly. But, but right. So, um, but this, what we're going to do is like a standard Italian, right? Is that it's going to be an open E. So let's just read it. Yeah. Let's, let's let's hear what you have. I, I will read it. I will read both uh, ways. It wouldn't be uh, so natural the other way, but I will. Che tremano d'amore e di speranza. Okay. Or, che tremano d'amore e di speranza. Okay. So the difference Great. is just an E. Great. So it's very f the very first reading through, you did not, like the very first at the beginning of the video, you didn't double the T. As you went on and on and on and you weren't aware of it, you had a slight doubling of the T. Uh, but you know, you know what? Yeah. When, when I read, I'm not thinking of... Uh, the exact spoken language, and I'm not thinking of the melody. But when I read, I think as if I were reading a poem. And so I just put uh, some silence here and there and just stop. So uh, it's not now that we are repeating, I'm more speaking. That's the difference between what I did before and what I'm doing now. Mm, it's just because when I uh, read as if I were reading a poem, it's more clear. The pronunciation is more clear. That's the that's why I do it. My my but, question for you, my question yes. for you is: Are you doing it more as a poem now or when you first read it? More, sorry, more. Uh, is it more of a poem now or when you first read it? When I first read it, it was more as a poem, and now I'm more as a spoken language. It's very funny to think about what did Puccini want, because he's writing through composed, like they're writing through, see, by now, of the time of Boito, after Boito, Verdi was writing through composed, because they had to fight. Here's the thing, because of censorship, right? When you had the, 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 the Austrians were ruling Italy. Yes. Right? The censors would, Verdi was trying to write a prose libretto, right? A free through composed libretto. And the censors would send it back and say, this doesn't rhyme. They wanted the more realism. They wanted the verismo back, yeah. right? So they had to fight for the verismo, right? Yet they still have poetry. They still have rhyming. Even in Puccini, there's rhyming, there's poetry. So, Here's our choice as the artist. What did he actually want? <laughs> Both the readings that you did are equally valid. Isn't that yeah. interesting, right? Yes, it is. So yes. Yes. In we history, have to consider we have to consider that doesn't matter if they were trying to change things and to make things less mm, poetic or whatever, verismo, but they were still at the beginning of the century. <laughs> that was the, the, the era, I mean. So they couldn't be so detached from the, their roots, from the, where, the way they grew up and the culture they came from. So they were slowly trying to do that. Probably it's just the middle way of it. I don't know, it's just it's my, is I'm supposing, I'm not sure about that, but it could here's be. The, here's the interesting thing too, Verdi in his letters, when he was describing somebody creating one of his works, supposedly he always said, said. You should have heard how Strepponi said Norma, she declaimed it, 
instead of sung. And he's always saying, my music should not be sung. I don't want you to sing my music. Very interesting, right? Yes. So, I, you know, I like the one where you just read, where, where you read it. And I also like the poetry one, too. Both of them are very, very, very nice, right? But see, as you, as you thought more conversational, you did add more of the doublings. The, the yeah, doublings. of course. It's more spontaneous. And I think that when somebody's singing, we are talking about being spontaneous and fluent, aren't we? So if we just do both, they can hear the pronunciation, the a proper pronunciation, clear, but also the fluency of the sentence. So let's go on to the next yeah. line. The next line has something very, very interesting in it. So, Ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me. So you but, did a little northern. On the yeah, east. I did my way. I did it my way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so now I'm just quoting. <laughs> okay. But now, uh, ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me. Right. This so, is the right. You, so you had an assimil... So here's the thing. You had an assimilation. When you say I-N-M-E, what happens? Yeah. In me. Right. Right. You are one of the first Italian people I've met who will admit to doing that. Most <laughs> Italian people will say, what are you talking about? I say N, right? Yeah. But but that's 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 an assimilation, right? It, um, it's true. It's it, true. There are, there are several is, assimilations. When we have uh, N can be a problem sometimes. For example, the, the word anche. Anche. Of the tongue. Mm. It's a nasal. Yeah. It's a nasal. So in this case, how could you put a nasal, which is the fastest way to say an N when it's in the middle of different situations you know so anche mm, mm, you do it back nasal and you can do it but in this case you have in me okay i can say it if i speak slowly in yeah. me and so i say in with an nasal and then i say me but if i'm speaking fast and if or if i singing and i'm singing certain um, uh, melodies i will have troubles doing that. It, it's a waste of time, a waste of energy. So I will say in me. I will just cut the end and say me. Yes. All languages do that. And there, are, All... there are several, there are some dangers too. So if you release the tongue from the tip of the mouth and you're you're trying to sing legato, you're gonna have a shadow vowel. So you're gonna say in me. If 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 you're you know like if you do it wrong that that's the thing you're going to, you know, like, especially if it's one of those passages where you're going to have a hard time going from the end to the lips going together. Right. So, so that's, that's the danger. That's the other reason why now there's a way to do it wrong too. Again, people exaggerate it. So people learn this trick and then they go and they show it off. So they go in and then it's wrong too, because it's too much. <laughs> Right. So no, because, the thing is, is that uh, it has to go by fast and not be natural. John, John when you when you uh, are Italian and you say in me, you are thinking a nasal and me. Even when you say it faster, that's why you really have to listen to yourself to understand what we are talking about. Because it's obvious that I'm saying in me. In, in, like a French nasal, you know, same thing. It's a very fast thing. We say it and we think it. So if you are not Italian, you don't think that N, nasal N, and we can hear it. The audience can hear. But if you are in a fast sentence, you say in me, in me, it becomes two M. We, but have, you things like, we have things like this that we do in English. So we say, yes. in fact, in fact, yeah. and we have that assimilation. See, it's the, it's the inverno one, inverno, where yeah. it's here on the bottom lip. So I did a video on the, the N assimilations, right? That there were, four, there were four different Ns. And basically, the N 
just does what the next consonant is going to do. So the position of the next consonant. So the the sangue one, because you're going to go gue, 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 with the middle of your tongue, then the N is on the middle yeah. of the tongue. Inno, right, is tip of the tongue, because you're going to do another N, tip of the tongue, right? Uh, dum padre, because you're going to say padre, the plosives are with the lips together. And then inferno, inverno. Same, but, because you're going to do a fricative, it's before yeah. the, does that make sense? So it's the thing that's coming up that makes the N assimilate. Yes. The, the consonant that's coming up. I know you don't think of it this way because you just do it. Yes, yes. But this is how I would teach, this is how I would teach somebody who doesn't speak Italian to do it. Some of them are very difficult to get. And I, I would also encourage people to just leave them out. If you if you can't do it naturally, don't do it because it's only going to make things worse. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be really. I mean, you're going to waste time, as we said. Yeah, it's just yeah. a waste of time and energy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it may. In this in this situation, it may is okay. Yeah. I'm I'm just crazy about this stuff. Like this stuff makes me lose sleep. And then you know, like if somebody does it wrong, then it's clunky. So it does make your singing more, it does, it, you know, if you do it right and you actually nail it, it makes your singing very, very elegant and beautiful. If you miss it, you're, you know, it's just going to make things worse. So that's that. Well, that's why people pay a ticket to hear you sing, because you're going to be doing something that no one else can do. Yeah, yeah. it's an it's an elite art form. There's no way of getting around it. OK, okay, okay let's go. I read it. Shall I read it? Yes. OK. Il nome mio nessun saprà. Okay. Um, so, again, it's rhythmic, right? Yeah. And, and because it's nessun, the E is closed, nome, single M. The, the, the mistake I hear all the time is il nome, people mm -hmm. do that all the okay. time. And it doesn't matter. It, it seems to be like if you're not Italian, that's what you're going to do. Here's the other thing about this, right? The legato in this line is the hardest thing ever to accomplish. When you hear people sing, right? Ma il mio, ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me. Il nome mio nessun saprà. That kind of legato where you have to divide, right? You'll hear ma il misere. You'll hear bounciness because the words are bouncy. Yeah. The the the, the way you vibrate is so important. Okay, let's try and do something. I will try and read it again, but this time trying to respect the rhythm of the melody, just the rhythm. Okay. Shall we try? Yes. Ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me. So what happens, what happens is it becomes too sing-song. So you get yeah. this. Ma il mio nero. You sound like you're from Sicily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> right. The other one. Il nome mio nero. But on the, other hand, on the other hand, that's a very, very good exercise for people to do that way. It's very good because for people who aren't Italian, they will practice lots of flesh in the face. It's very more physical. Yeah. Does that make sense? Especially about this S, because in general, we always agree that um, when we have a double, in general, it's the previous vowel that is longer, or it depends on the note. But in this case, this, this ne soon, this S is quite long. It's much more pronounced than uh, on in other situations, like principessa. I mean, or ne soon. I mean, in this very case, I, I hear it. I, I, Tell me if you agree, because uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I have this feeling that in this case, nessun, the S, double S sounds more 
in the melody when it is sung. Il nome mio nessun. And it is very, it has to be sad. It's very strong. It's also very difficult it's because it's very difficult because it's high. It's above, you know, it's above the staff, right? And the S is going to blow your vocal cords apart as you do it. So it's very difficult technically. So yeah, if you can do it, do it. But <laughs> no, I mean, it's no. What I mean is that I'm not uh, saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's very difficult, but yes, it's, yes, going yes. To, it's going to it's going to show who's the top person seeing us. But the thing I, I mean, il nome mio nessun. We could say nessun, nessun or nessun a little bit more. It's not that you have to do an ass that lasts uh, and makes your voice just like we go like this. It's just a matter of saying it a little longer. It, you can do it here. It doesn't sound vulgar if we want to use this word. Hmm? I, no, I'm in agreement. It's just that what I'm saying is that the singer has to be very judicious, can do it, but it's going to, going to be the most, um, the most adept singer who will be able to do it without blowing yeah. the vocal cords apart. And I'm not saying yeah. it's not impossible, but wow, it just shows you how hard it is to sing Yes. When, when, when somebody's really, really good, somebody's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Allora, I go on. No, yes. no, sulla tua bocca lo dirò yeah, quando did, la luce. You did exactly yeah. the way Puccini said it, because he put the two nose together, right? The first no closed a little bit, the second one opened, and then it was a double S at the beginning of the word. Right? People have to realize that the word N-O-N -N is usually closed because it's in the unstressed part of the, of the sentence. Yeah. Right? Say, right? But the word N-O is slightly open because it's usually on the stressed. But when you have two in a row, you will harmonize it, as you did. You harmonized. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> Yes. Lo di <laughs> yes, yes, does. Lo dirò quando la luce splenderà. Okay, so you doubled the Q. Yeah. Because the, the future tense, right, I will say it, double Q. Very slightly, though, and very beautifully done, by the way, very elegant. Um, and, and then one more thing, there's a danger, right? I hear people say spla, they open that all the time, splenderà. And they have to say it over and over and over again. But that, from how that open is vocal depth, yeah, if you yeah. do, right? But you did splendera, which is the right one. Yes. So, okay. So, shall we go on? Ed il mio bacio scioglierà. So, bacio is a very hard thing to sing without doubling the ch. And you, you did it, you actually did it more poetic than spoken. Because when you speak, you can... Uh, cut the ah more, but you said bacio in the exaggerated singing way. You see? Yes. And that's what yes. we want. We want that. I will speak now. Ed il mio bacio scioglierà. Yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, beautiful. But also, here's the other thing. There is a, um, the, the vowels are going around and around in your head in Italian more, right? And that's the other thing you want when you sing. Right. I'm meaning that you go all the way from A, E, A, E, E di il mio bacio, going around in your head. Okay, going on, you say this in the north sometimes. <laughs> I would say, il silenzio, <laughs> yeah. il silenzio che ti fa mia. Yes. Or, il silenzio che ti fa mia. Yeah. Okay. Now, you have a choice here, and you did one one time, and you did one the other time. So you could double after fa, you could double the mia, the m. You did that the second time. The first time, you doubled the t of che ti fa mia. I'm exaggerating, right? Second yeah, time, yeah. you went fa mia, fa mia. But both times, you, you chose one or the other. And actually, that's a good thing to do, is to not do too many. 
But I, when I when I write the text out, I present all the choices. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do them all. But no, I, I, I one or the other. I noticed that these uh, doubles are uh, happen when I try to link the words more when I want to do them together more. So if I want to say il silenzio che ti, che ti farà mia, il silenzio che ti fa mia, it becomes natural when you try to put them all together. Yes, because you don't have to have silence between the words. All right, that's that's a very that's a very good and very interesting point. So the the the, the I think the opposite would happen for us non-Italians, but for you, it's the, it's so funny, right? How that works, that you're yeah, linking, yes. by, by linking, you end up with things that to us are the less legato, right? Par yeah. it's paradoxical. All right, let's go on. Here's the chorus part. Il nome suo nessun saprà. Okay. E so noi the... dovrem, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go e yes. noi dovrem, ahimè, Morir, morir. So say the word for we. Say no. it very slowly. Say it again. Noi. Yes. So in, in English speakers, and I see even teachers saying this and coaches saying this, for, for a lot of people, they make it rhyme with the English word boy. Mm -hmm. See, so they say noi. Noi. Right. Ah, absolutely. You did very beautifully. Right. So no, you know when you what? It, no, when you say it, I want the listeners to hear how pure the two vowels are and how distinct they are. Say it again for them, please. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because there is a there's a comedian here that says that. No, I, boy, because yeah. he, imitate, he imitates people from my city. <laughs> oh, my, really? hometown city and it's yeah. very funny so that's why i laughed i'm sorry um e noi noi this is correct yes yes so it's closed though in the semi vowel e yeah noi dovrem yes close e close the at the end close the so I the, yes yes but you could also hear i may I may, somebody says that too, but this is not a word we use when we speak. We don't say, I no. may, <laughs> this is very old. No, what's funny is that you, if you look in the DOP, that this, this has definitely changed from open to closed in modern Italian. It was, I may lasa, right? In the old Italian, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it became, I may closed. Mm, okay, okay, yes. And uh, I go on? Shall I yes. go on? Di legua. Or, okay. Di legua o notte, tramontate okay. stelle. Okay, so um, the, the E in the verb is closed. And then you had, you had a very slight double N. Uh, demonstrate to them the double T in Okay. Not te. You have so to don't, wait. We don't technically say two T's, right? No. It's just a, I call it suspense sound. Like okay. you stay there and wait for the T to arrive. Of course, when you sing, you have to say the O. Not te. You cannot, you cannot say not. You know? Yeah, te. absolutely. Not do absolutely. that when you sing. But when you speak, you just do not. And the tongue is already there on the palate, waiting to pronounce the T. Not te, staying there, waiting. Not te, not te. You keep your tongue put on the palate, keep silent, and <laughs> wait for a second. So, not uh, so T's, K's, so certain hard consonants are done by stopping phonation, and then L's, M's, and N's are doing by continuing phonation, right? It, here's the thing that's almost never talked about. Right. People are all saying semantically that you're doing two T's. Right. Yeah, that's true. You have two printed T's, but you're not doing two T's. You're doing one T. Right. And okay. then people get confused. You hear them sing two T's. So they'll say not 
te, like that. And with the aspirated T, or they'll cut the no, because they, people will say too, you shorten the vowel, you shorten the vowel, which is correct, but without nuance. So people will say shorten the vowel before the double T. So then you get not te, you get the strangled one, right? You have to elongate the vowel, go up to the T, don't say it, then say it as you demonstrate. Okay. I, I will do it now, right? And then I will say another thing about this double T and this uh, this word. Not te is right. It means night. But if you say no te, it it's means no. 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 <laughs> it is no. Now, the point is that they have to say it a little stronger than just one T. It's not no te. It is not te when you speak. And when you sing, it would be no te. There's a second of silence. Very, it's a very little moment, but it is there. Otherwise, you are saying no te, which yeah. is notes. It's another word. I understand that this is very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. So things change, change, things that will absolutely change meaning on you without you. And you can actually say something bad, too. Um, right? In many cases, yes. So the one that happen. gets me all the time is the one that's in old Italian is now, now, like right now, which is or, or, right? And then yeah. people say or, or, or they yeah. say, they, <laughs> so it sounds like horror in the way they say it instead of. Right. Or, right now, or, by mixing up the R's or mixing up, uh, or mixing up the the um the the closed and open, you get different. You get a different word. All yes. right. Let's, so let's finish this. We're almost to the end. Okay. Tramontate stelle. Tramontate stelle. Okay. So single T's. Single T's. That's the mistake you hear all the time. Double T word. Single T. And then going on. So uh, you mean single T in tramontate? Yeah, people will sing tramontate stelle. Okay, okay. <laughs> you that yes, all. single T, yeah. tramontate. So you, you keep the A, ah, you keep the A ah going. You don't let yes. that stop. Yes, the the stress is on the A, tramontate, tramontate. So it's easier to pronounce the last T and if E. You, Yes, if you if you double the A, uh, then you won't double the T. Yeah, 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 yeah. All'alba vincerò. Yes, so we have an open O at the end, right? And yeah. then all'alba, you did that. I'm exaggerating, but just so they hear that the L's are all phonated. Yes, yes, all'alba. It's alliteration here. All'alba vincerò. All L. All'alba. And in this case, we have double L and single L. All double L. Alba, it's single. But it sounds quite all double, you know, because yeah, of the absolutely. melody. Well, here's the thing, right? L's that touch a consonant will be double L most of the yeah. time. I'll probably find an exception, but. Most of the time, you will double an L if it touches another consonant. Does that make sense? Right? Yes. So that's why you said, oh, well, yeah, it's a single consonant, but then it sounds like a double. Right? Yeah. So, so yeah. these are the things in Italian that are not phonetic, right? Where we're taught that Italian is a phonetic language. All right. Well, we have certainly covered that in detail. And now you've made it to the end of another video. And if you feel like you've benefited from our work, and we've saved you a lot of money, why not head over to Patreon or Subscribestar to support our work? There you may donate as little as a couple dollars a month. Your support is very appreciated and helps us very much in the creation of new videos. Also, you may support us by subscribing, sharing, and liking the videos. Sharing especially helps YouTube recognize that this channel is relevant. Remember that nothing takes the place of a great live coaching. So why not show off your new Italian pronunciation skills to your coach or teacher. Your coach or teacher will be very happy to be able to now spend more time on music rather than pronunciation. So also I wanna mention that um, we both will release 
uh, shorter videos just on the pronunciation. This is just for like the nerdy kind of in detail <laughs> questions you might have. So don't forget to ask us questions about things that still might be perplexing you about Italian. We'll be very happy. Um, always share, comment, and like, and we will see you in the next video. Ciao. Thanks for watching. Bye -bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you.